Hi everyone, this is Laura again. Yes, I am busy with videos. <laughs> so I am doing this video for Jenny V. And Jenny V left me a message on my channel that she would like for me to do a tutorial on how to do the um, the garnish on one of my cards, my embellishment cards, my spellbinders, um, birthday cards. I used a buckle and I used some ribbon, um, these buckle sliders. And she loved the ribbon treatment and just said, you know, I know your hands are pretty bad, but could you please do a tutorial? And when she asked for the tutorial, um, I wasn't able to do it just then because my son, I just had a house full of people. Um, it was my son's birthday. They came from Delaware and we had guests coming in and we were out and it was a lot of fun. I had a super wonderful time. So yes, Jenny, thank you for all your well wishes. Um, also, that was so sweet of you to um, mention you know, about my whole hand situation. So I'm having a good day today. So today I will be doing that video for you. But before I get to that video, I also been doing secret giveaways um, on my channel uh, for people who have been leaving comments. And on one of my videos, I did some, oh, I'm cutting these out. Sorry, there were, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve people who answered my secret hidden giveaway question. Twelve. Last time there were only four. This time there's twelve. So I think we're moving on up. <laughs> so, anyways, while I quickly, you know what? I'm going to use this jar too. Um, I'm going to go over some of the buckles that I have for you, Jenny. Um, the different sizes and I'm just going to do a quick tutorial but before I do that I would like to put these in here these are all the girls who answered and I'm saying girls because no boys answered it or at least I don't think any boys not by the names that I have here but uh, all the girls who answered the question I said that I would be gifting either the happy harvest um, die cuts from the lawn font set or the Merry Christmas. Well, I'm going to be put drawing two people's names and depending on who you are, you're going to be getting uh, some of those die cuts along with some other goodies that are going to be a surprise because that's how Laura rolls. She loves sending goodies to her friends. I love sharing. I really do. It's... You know, so many wonderful ladies share so much here. So this is just the least bit I could do too. Um, plus I like doing the secret hidden giveaways. Um, and it gives old and new subbies a chance to participate. Um, and these are... I'm sending enough die cuts that you could, of course, you can do whatever you want with them. It doesn't have to be for a card, but you have enough die cuts that you can create up to two to four cards, depending on how um, how many die cut pieces you want to use. You can use them for anything, of course. You can use them for tags. You can use them for just about anything, anything you want. So I have my list of people and I want to thank everyone who did participate in this and answered the question. I almost left one person out and I hope I can read my own handwriting because this one in particular, I almost couldn't. <laughs> thank goodness I remember her name and I know who she is. And this one was just left over. Um, and I'll put that to the side. So these are my 12 people. I'm going to shake, 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 shake. And we are going to close our eyes. I can't even fit my hand down in there because of my fingers. So we'll just draw one name first. Like I said, I'm going to draw two. 
So the first one is Melly. Melly, you will be getting one of these die cuts. I'll have to go back on that video and see which one was your favorite, the Scarecrow or the Sweet Christmas, the Happy Harvest or the Sweet Christmas. And then the next one, oh, sorry, I didn't, I didn't shake. Let me shake first. Shake, 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 shake. Now we'll pull one out. And that way you can see that I'm not peeking. Although my hands are not working as well as I thought. And the next person is Marla H. Marla H, you won a die cut kit. So Marla and, oh, I got two M's. Isn't that funny? Marla and Melly. And Melly, I'm pretty sure is, if she's an all subscriber, I just started reading her messages recently. So Melly and Marla H, you are the two winners. I have to go back and see which one of you's wanted which kit. So those are the winners for my kit giveaway. Two winners. My third winner, and she doesn't know this, Jenny. Since you asked me about the ribbon buckles, and since you are another person that I feel is fairly new to my channel, I don't recall um, reading comments from you before, but if you did, I am so sorry because you know my mind is not all there anyways. <laughs> but I thought that after making this tutorial for you, it would be nice if you had some of these belt buckles um, to actually use. So, and I just thought of this right now because I'm looking at all my little things I'm going to go over with you. I will be sending you some of these slider buckles so that you can practice making bows. So, Jenny has sent me a message and she wanted me to do, or oh, you're going to be getting this for you. That's that's for Jenny. That's a little something from me. So Jenny, I hope you're watching this video. Please PM me your address. I will be sending you some goodies along with these um, ribbon buckles. So ribbon buckles, ribbon buckles. I just discovered them, Jenny. Um, I was watching Christina Griffith from Spellbinders. And that's where I learned to do this from her. So I'm going to put her video in the description box below. So you can go over and check them out as well. Now I have purchased my ribbon buckles from eBay. Um, and I'm just going to take out a few of the different ones that I have in my stash that I've managed to pick up along the way just so you can get an idea that there are there are lots of different sizes and there are many different kinds and I keep them all in my jar and just to share a few so that you can see all the different kinds they have available and yes they do have different sizes they have them with this um, bling out appearance which are these and these are my square ones and as you can see these are two different sizes now see this is what you call a bad batch now I do order from eBay and they are like these big old lots and these big old bags I've seen this happen before um, if you were to purchase these and you ever did get these don't throw them out guys I know they don't look too pretty, but if you have alcohol markers, alcohol inks, maybe even some gesso, you can color these and make them whatever color you want. And that way, that blackness, which is probably just something that happened while it was being made in the machines, um, it almost looks like it burnt. Um, that won't be a problem. Or you can color the whole thing black and uh, use it maybe as a steampunk or mixed media projects or steampunk projects, whatever. This one here, this is just another different looking belt buckle. Of course, again, you can do that ribbon treatment with all of these. I like this one because it's a little bit more fancier. It has like that X going on. 
This one is a circle one. And I love the circle ones. Again, made out of the same acrylic. Um, makes it look like it has bling on it. Um, if you have liquid pearls and you have these, you can put little liquid pearls all inside those little, I don't know if the camera will show it, but it's almost like they have these little divots in these little rhinestone pieces where you can put something in there. Or you can take, again, an alcohol marker and color it whatever you want. That's another thing. All of mine are in silver. I've used it as silver so far. But if I wanted to change the colors, all I would have to do is use paints, again, alcohol inks, whatever you have in your stash that you can color it. Now, this one is a little bit smaller. It's also a square. <coughs> In comparison to this one, which when you're purchasing them, that's something that you want to do. Now, I don't know the sizes that I have, Jenny. I just don't know. I have several different kinds. And this one happens to be my favorite. This is a little heart. These are flat back pearls. And this is also a slider. Now, all my ribbon sliders I purchased on eBay. Um, so if you go to eBay and you um, punch in ribbon sliders, you're going to get a really, really big selection of lots of different kinds. So I just wanted to share with you all the different kinds of ribbon sliders that are available that you can purchase and um, play with in creating your um, little ribbon slider. I mean your little bow. So I am going to use the big fat square one for this tutorial. Now, ordinarily, the reason I'm using the big fat one is because I pulled out my pink ribbons and I'm not gonna go back in that box to get a different ribbon. And then pulling out my ribbon, I realized that I don't have the three eighths of an inch and I think three eighths is the best size for these ribbon buckles but I'm gonna do it anyway because I want to share with you that even though your card I mean your ribbon is not three eighths you can still use it um, I do sometimes need the help of a pokey stick I'm going to use this stylus and I am going to cut out you're going to need three pieces besides the piece that's going to be wrapped around the card. Now, I am going to measure this. Also, when you're going to cut your ribbon, Jenny, um, this is going to be the one that's going to go around the card. Now, I'm going to just make believe that I have... You know what? How about if we use this as a demonstration? I already... I should have loaded the video for this already. Um, and this is what I'm going to be making for Jenny. Um, that's what she wanted a tutorial on. So what I do first is I take a piece of ribbon, I measure it, and I always leave a little extra on the sides. Now this one frays really easy. I don't know if you can see that. It's already fraying. You see how much it's fraying? That's just for me touching it. If you have a ribbon that's like that, um, I would cut extra off the, I would, in other words, that's why I have so much extra on the ends. I have like half an inch on either end so that if it does free a lot, I can still tuck it behind my card. And that's what I do first. I tuck this piece behind the card first. So let's make believe that this is tucked behind the card. This is the base where you're going to start. Then what you want to do is you want to cut your first piece. The first piece is the one that's going to go in the ribbon buckle. What I do is I usually go like this, get an idea of how long I want it. And then what I do is I put my ribbon buckle in the center so I can see how much of this I have on either side. Now can you see where this one ends? 
and begin so if I cut it it's gonna look like it's about yay big which I think it's a perfect size for the center one so you see what I mean that's like it would be in the center here and this is what's going to be left over on this side and this is what's going to be showing on this side so that to me is a perfect size so I'm going to snip that right there but again I'm going to have a little extra because I know this is going to fray and I'm going to set this one this buckle aside now the next one forget about this piece for now the next one because it's three layers so the one that I just did is the top layer. The next one, you want it to go staggered like little steps. And the next one should be a little bit bigger. So again, I'm going to fold my ribbon in half. And I'm going to compare it to this one. And I'm just going to cut it. See how I just layer it here? So I like that space right there. So now I'm going to layer the next one. to be a little bit longer than this one and that's where I'll cut and this let's say this piece is like this I will cut the next one a little bit bigger it's kind of hard to do things on camera <laughs> compared to when you're not on camera so now, do you see how that's overlapping there? So that's where I'm going to cut because I have a good, good amount of space there. And I'm going to just give it a quarter of an inch more for the frame. So now I have, this is the first layer. This is the second layer. I'm going to fold this second layer in half again. Measure it against this one again. And I'm just going to cut it a little bit longer than this one so that I have enough so that it does look like it's staggered. Now, if you're really good like at sewing and stuff like that, you didn't even have to do all that. You could just lay it all out and just add an inch an inch and an inch but I'm not that great at that <laughs> and I always have to do things the hard way of course so of course my tutorial is just an idea you will master this and make it your own so now what I do is I will take my hot glue gun and just glue all these little end pieces like that and let it overlap each other just by a little bit so I'm going to do that with this one Use my hot glue gun, glue these two pieces together, and you want to try to get it as even as possible. Get rid of those glue strings. There, I have my first piece. And now I do the same thing with the second one. Again, I do want it to overlap. I don't want it to come apart, and I want to get rid of those little frays. See? there we go that's the second one and now for the third one and some hot glue I just want to make sure they're both even well that was good I'm surprised <laughs> I did that pretty good and there's the next one now you don't have to worry about this because when you flip it over on your card this is what's gonna show so no one no one's gonna see that if you glue it down right no one will see that now I think I made this one a little bit larger than what I usually do but that's okay because I'm gonna put this one on a box probably so for the first layer you're going to put this one down. Now I take my little block just so I can get an idea of what it's going to look like and I put it like this. So that's my first layer. And then my second layer will go down on top of the first one. 
and yup it's already staggering and then I have my last layer now since this is the last and the first layer and this is the one that's gonna go through the ribbon buckle you have it glued together now what you want to do like I said this particular ribbon is one inch wide um, it's nice when you when you um, buy your ribbon buckles if you want to measure it all you have to do is take your ribbon to see if it will fit well before you do this process here and just see if you like the way it looks when it's inside your ribbon buckle and you can use these um, as a single layer you don't have to do the little bow like I'm doing and see if it's just fine but if you noticed the ends are a little crimped up that's because the ribbon here is bigger than the buckle you can use a smaller ribbon um, I find that 3 eighths of an inch seems to be the perfect size or even half an inch sometimes too now this one is um, I think it's a little bit less than half and a little bit nope this one is exactly half an inch and this is why I say the 3 eighths is my favorite and this would still work too this is just to give you an idea Jen I mean Jenny I'm sorry <laughs> I said Jen see now this one is the half an inch and this one would be perfect perfect for this so I could have used this one too but I like I don't know why I just like the center to look like it's um, I like that gathered fluffy puffy look to it which is why I used the one inch um, and like I said this one is is this one one inch oh no this one is seven eighths of an inch so this ribbon is actually 7 eighths it's not even an inch wide so I would go with 7 eighths half an inch and 3 eighths of an inch um, for the ribbon buckle now this is the part where I use my pokey stick you see how this is where you um, where you added your glue that might not go in behind the buckle as well so I just use my pokey stick to help it go through so that what I glue together doesn't come apart now that glue piece is the part that I'm gonna try to keep in the center as much as I can so that it doesn't um, give me a problem when I thread the ribbon through and it hopefully doesn't stick out as much um, the hot glue does make it hard and if it does stick out just take your pokey stick tuck it in until you're happy with the way it looks and you're just going to keep manipulating it, moving it around, making sure there are no fray pieces, making sure that the buckle does indeed show. And as you can see, I'm happy with that. I want that gathering in the center. I want it to look like it's more ribbon than buckle. I like that. I like that look. Um, some people want it, you know, a lot neater and prettier um, I just want to make sure that I tuck in whatever I think might be I'm fraying another thing is if you have a lighter and you have like a little loose fray that's not going to be taken care of with the tucking like this one right here it's so tiny it probably is not even showing on camera you take a lighter and I always have one at my desk and you just really quickly without burning it do that all the frays are gone from the ribbon so now I'm gonna glue you see this is where we gathered it that's the part that's gonna be in the middle so what you want to do is you want to add a tiny little bead of glue in that area and then you're just gonna put your finger in the center and hold that down oh come on camera pick this up it's not focusing and it's not gonna show because you're gonna have the other layers on top 
you see how that keeps it in place then I'm gonna do the same thing with the next layer only this time I'm gonna glue in here and I'm gonna touch this together making sure that I have this even just like so and then I'm gonna add another little bead of glue right here so that this layer can stick on top of this layer and again holding it in the center just the do you see how that's layered there and I'll get rid of all those glue strings in a minute but do you see how that's layered and it's glued and now we're gonna just add this piece here which has the buckle and it's already gathered in now that piece I'll just glue right on top of there like so and I add see another little another little piece came out little strings so I'm going to take the glue and this one I'm going to add a lot that's going to be a big glob of glue right there oh snookies and I'll just squish that in the center I want to pull away all my glue strings I hope you guys didn't see that. <laughs> I kind of dropped it before I was ready to um, glue it down and it it plopped. But thank goodness it plopped in the right place. So there's your ribbon. There is your buckle treatment. And now that you have all three layers on, now it can go in the center of this ribbon here like so I put that right in the middle and now I can use this to decorate any card any box anything I want and if you were going to use this all you will have to do is wrap it around and you can make these as long or as short as you like. Just remember to create for me the way I like to do is I like to do the top one first and then I have an idea of how long I want all the others to go. And that is how I make my ribbon bow buckles. And again, I learned this from Christina Griffith on Spellbinders. And I will have a link to the video of how she explained how she does hers in my description box below. So Jenny V, I hope this helps you. And I want to thank you so much for leaving the sweet comments on my videos that you've been leaving. Also for subbing and for requesting, um, for requesting for me to show you how to do this. And since you are new to my channel and to making these awesome little ribbon buckles, I will gift you a little pack to start you out. I might throw in a few little different other buckles in there. So PM me your address if you're watching this video. And I will get that to you as soon as I can. Guys, I know that you guys probably may know how to do this already. And if you don't, and this is the first time you're seeing it, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial as well. And I hope this helps you out um, with your little slider buckles or ribbon buckles. I'm not even sure what to call them because when I've looked for them, I've seen many different names. Um, I know there are sliders, ribbon sliders. I call them ribbon buckle sliders. <laughs> um, so anyway, guys, 
Melly and well, Marla, you don't have to contact me, sweetie, because I have your address. But Melly, don't have your address, love. Um, PM me your Addy so I can get you your little um, non fawn die cut kit out. Um, Marla, congrats. Hope you're watching so that uh, you just know. <laughs> I'll contact you anyway. Thanks for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you're all having a very blessed day, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye for now.